Everything seems to be a problem. When there's a massive crisis out there, we, we deal with it as if it's a massive problem. You see, and then in a sense, you stay in that zone. I, I said to the group yesterday where I spoke, the, the most simplest fact about the human brain is that the brain doesn't care what you put into it. It really does. It never cares. If you put nonsense in it, it gives you nonsense back all the time. If you, if you put problems in it, it gives you problems back. I spoke to a sports scientist uh, we, in a radio interview a couple of weeks ago. And the interview, we were, talk, were talking about how fast can the human being run. Again, if you look at these zones, if you, if you look at that inner zone, you will keep on saying, well, Bolt, maybe 9.5, maybe in 10 years, 9.4, maybe another 30 years. Nonsense. Nonsense. We don't have a clue how fast the human being can run. If you think in that beyond the zone, maybe eight seconds. But then we've got to totally change the approach of how the body moves. The brain has got to take over and move the body, not the other way around. It's, it's the way you, you anchor yourself in the possibility. Anything becomes possible. It's what you put in, is what you get out. Something where David was very much involved into in looking at South Africa and our transformation and asking the question why South Africa did not have a revolution from a creativity perspective. Why? And we looked at it and, and in a sense maybe found many of these answers. And, and, and so I was very close to Sid Pons and we, we sat down and I said to him, Sid, you know what I've started to find is that if people keep on using the model as ease, the language never moves away from problem. As, as if everyone always has, you know, you always have a problem. You can't live without a problem. Hey, what's your problem? Problem, hey, what's your problem? And he, he agreed completely with that. And in his latest book, he, he talks about not the problem-solving model, but the opportunity-finding model. He talks about the opportunity-finding model. Very little changes, but the language changes. The language changes. Then, as I said, I'm not... And, and by the way, what is interesting about all these techniques, yes, this is very important, that all these techniques were invented in the 1950s. They were invented in the 1950s. Or even brainstorming before that. I think brainstorming in 1938. 60 years old. And we still use it as if it was invented yesterday. Synectics, and I'm not sort of explaining this. Triz, wonderful, they're all wonderful stuff. Hey, 50 years old. I got an invitation a couple of days ago to go to Boston in a few weeks to, to be there with a group of people in innovation, inventing something using the Triz model. Of course it's good. Hey, 50 years old. The Delphi method and Morphological analysis. Now, mind mapping, I know. I mean, the new mind mapping approaches and methodologies are unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's still mind mapping. Scamper again, great. I mean, you can't start your training with a group of people without using Scamper. But you can't stay with Scamper. It's 2009. It's 2009. High level of creativity. It's, it's interesting in this ongoing research on what is the IQ of Beyonders in the one side and what is their creativity score. Now, now what was interesting in, in Torrance's last study a few years ago, he found that in another Beyonder group that the IQ was somewhere between 115 and 125, but the creativity score was above 130. So that was the kind of, uh, but uh, you know, that's a bit touchy and sensitive. So I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not putting it on the screen. You see. What did he mean by a high level of creativity? He first meant that you need to have developed a number of skills. The first skill, and maybe it is there, maybe it's not. The first skill is fluency. That was the first skill he said that a beyonder needs to have. Fluency basically means you, you must have more ideas than the people around you. You must have more ideas. You can't fall back on the same ideas that you had yesterday. That just doesn't work for a beyonder. I said to a group yesterday, and all the years, and many of my colleagues will vouch for that, it's very easy and a simple skill to develop in children and adults. Fluency, many ideas. 
Then the other uh, skill is flexibility. Flexibility means different kinds of ideas. So it's many ideas and then different kinds of ideas. So you, you uh, uh, again, if I use the example of a glass, if I had a glass and, and I ask you what can you do with this glass, and you say to me I can drink water from this glass, I can drink beer from this glass, I can drink a soft drink from this glass, that, that, that's fluency. But that's not flexibility because you're actually saying I'm drinking from this glass. Flexibility would be that, yeah, you drink from this glass, or I can break this glass and use it as a weapon. I can put sand in it and plant something in it. That would be flexibility. Those are different kinds of ideas. That would be flexibility. And these, these are all absolutely trainable. The other one would be, the third would be originality, getting to that idea that is just different and unique and so on. And again, we found, again, the more the, the fluent is really the point of departure. The more fluent you can become, we found this in all the beyonders, in all the beyonders, the more fluent you can become, the better the chances of original thought, always. Because of those more and more ideas, as Hermann said earlier, you start to make unique connections, which gives you originality. The fourth quality that came out in Torres' research is getting to the essence. That, that beyond us seem to get to the essence, where other people can't. Be getting to the essence means you cut through all the nonsense, you zap, this is it. You get to the essence. The worst enemy of creativity and beyondness is people who seem to close quickly. So the, the, the skill was resisting premature closure. That's how, what he called it. He called it resisting premature closure. People who close quickly find it difficult, very difficult to remain in that zone of beyondness because they seem to know it all. They close their minds. They don't listen. And there's no incubation that takes place. Creative people can perform miracles but they are always in danger of crucifixion. It is a beautiful quote that he used one day in his class, documented later on. I just cannot forget this quote. Creative people can perform miracles, but they are always in danger of crucifixion. And what he actually said, all of us in this room, you've got to be comfortable with crucifixion. It's going to happen in any case. It's going to happen in any case. Be okay with it. It's an eight-dimensional model that we train people in, in, in a sense, assisting them to get to be honest. Let me just put this up for you. Um, these are the eight dimensions of the model. And, and in a sense, ah, they all need to be, in some way, you've got to have those processes in place. People often ask me, where do you start? I, I, I don't know. I think different people start dif at different p p places. I think that sometimes... You sit here and boom, you have an idea. And, and then the, it's, you start with an idea. Then what do you do next? You, you may go to, say, but to someone else and say, gee, I've got this idea. Get some facts about this idea. Find some facts. And then maybe you, you ask people to do a bit of analysis on this idea. Or you can start anywhere. You may get an image of the future. And then ask people here to, to buy into it. You sit next to one-on-one -on -one with a person and say, come on, I'll share this with you. Help me on this. Or you go to a team. You go to and share it. So whatever. But eventually, I believe that all eight dimensions need to be in place. The South African rugby team at the moment is uh, the world champions and also the Tri-Nation champions. The, the players are not better players than a few years ago. But the team itself, as I actually, I worked with some of these teams. We gave them what we call an, an anti-negativity diary, a 29-day diary that they put in their pockets. And every day, every day, when they have a negative thought, they write it down and write down the opposite. And so they are totally and absolutely anchored somewhere else. That specific team, the captain, by the way, is a very strong people's person. And, and this team spirit that he creates, it's the same players, but they're in a sense unbeatable at the moment because they know we're there. The moment you go there as a team or as a business or as an individual or wherever, you don't win anymore.